Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Um, today's going to be a haul, specifically a weekend haul of things that I found. Um, certain every other weekend, I usually go out with my uh, son and his uh, and his grandpa, and we go out, take him to his guitar lesson, and go shopping and whatnot. And I usually stop at our regular haunts, like uh, Electric Kitsch the Record Store, um, Media Replay, and other place that's got everything, games, you name it, records. Um, and then I usually hit, hit Cashman's Comics because I go there about every two weeks to kind of check my box. And remember, I'm getting three uh, facsimile, Marvel facsimile, and whatever, some of the DC stuff that comes through. But pretty much I'll get everything Marvel, the facsimile comics. And I've been checking the, uh, the preview guides, and it seems like there's almost consistently now three the titles a month on that there's continuing the secret wars you know the it's february is done so they in january they have the first two out the next would be in march would be the third one um the uh, spider-man i can't remember what number they're starting on but the spider-man with the black costume also going every month and uh and some x-men title now it doesn't have to necessarily be the uncanny x-men sorry it could be uh um the uh the Wolverine number ones. There's a number Wolverine number one from the '89 series coming up. Um, there also could be uh, uh, the, well, the Uncanny X-Men kind of skip around. I know there's the one uh, of debut of Dazzler coming up. Um, the last one, which I'll show you, which I got. So I picked up. Luckily, I got all three of February's uh, listings were all in my box at once. So I got all three of them. And uh, seems like it's going to go that way. Seems like if I go to now, if I go in another two weeks, I'll probably have the next Secret Wars comic, or maybe the next, I don't know, that's weird, I, I, I went in January, I don't know, maybe, that's weird how we, the, the timing goes on that, but anyways, uh, regardless, you know, every couple of times a month I'll get all three of those issues, and then I can check to see if there's a DC one that I just didn't see that came up. Um, but, uh, and then we like to go over to the record store and stuff like that. So I'll show you what I picked up first, probably being at Media, because we go to the Guitar Center in Saginaw, and then we go over to Media Reload. And I wasn't really expecting to go there, actually, but my son wanted to, and I wasn't expecting to find anything, because we were just there a couple of weeks ago, and they didn't have anything, really. Um, but they did have, this time, Mental Health. Now, <clears throat> I almost got this a couple of times, the, the downtown the antique shop he had it but it was all scratched up and uh and the, the the jacket was okay but the inside the record was just totally scratched up and he wanted like 25 bucks for it which i thought was insane um media reload wanted well, i think it was nine dollars and like 25 cents um and the record is perfect there's like not a flaw on it however the only thing that was rough on it was the end of the jacket was a little warm but there's no ring wear so other than that it really is pretty much perfect now I put a sleeve on it it doesn't it didn't have a sleeve in it now I'm assuming it probably came with a sleeve with the lyric sheet and I like to get those you know as much as possible but I guess like I said the second time I've seen this record come up and I wanted to get it and you know the first one wasn't worth it but this one I thought at that price because like I said I like to find records for ten dollars and less it's kind of my sweet spot if I can find records for ten dollars and less or less i'm pretty happy so i kind of look for those and i like to get original press things even though i love the reissues it's just so expensive uh too expensive so i've been waiting to get quiet right if you don't know my video or my go look at my def leopard pyromania a record uh what do you call it um review on this on, the, on that record and when i talk about that record i talk about the story how i discovered this um let me just make it real quick if you don't want to go back and watch that video. So, Solid Gold, they were on Solid Gold back in 1983, and they played Come On, Feel the Noise. I didn't know who they were. I thought they were so cool looking, and they, they just loved the song. Got Had to have, wanted the record and cassette. My dad took me to Sears in, in Sterling Heights, Sterling Whites, to go find uh, the record, because he had to go to Sears for some reason. They had a nice record section upstairs, the second level of Sears. Um... And I ended up getting 
Def Leppard. Now the reason why is because the next day after Solid Gold aired Quiet Riot, a kid named Jason Rizzo in fifth grade uh, told, I asked him, I said, did you watch Solid Gold last night? Yeah, he didn't. I said, did you, what was the name of the band? He goes, oh, Def Leppard. Okay. I never heard of them either at this time. So I, uh, I thought, assumed it was Def Leppard. So I was going through the Def Leppard, looking for Def Leppard. I found Pyromania. And all oh, that's really cool. Like, and I love that cover. And I got, like I said, it goes into the Pyromania video. Watch that. Um, and then, of course, I played the whole album through. There's no come on, feel the noise. What's he talking about? Does it sound anything like that band that I heard last night? And then somebody who actually knew what they're talking about said, no, that was Quiet Riot. And uh, I had to go back to Sears with my dad. I don't know why I didn't want to go back to Sears. I could have just went to Full Moon Records. Then my dad had to go back to, to Sears for something. And then uh, ended up getting uh, Quiet Riot's uh, Metal Health. So that was the story of how I got that album. So now I've got it on record. Add to the collection, so we're good there. Took a listen through it. Plays perfect. Sounds awesome. It sounds really good. I mean, the recording on it is really good. Um, it's funny because some records, especially vintage records, sometimes they come across sometimes tinny a little bit. I don't know what that is. Um, I mean, I had a, I'd say more of an entry level system, but I mean, it's still, it's like probably the best entry level system you could buy. Um, I mean, I didn't skimp on any of the components. And in fact, the headphones are more intermediate, open ear headphones. So, you know, if you want to listen to that, go back and watch my video, my audio file uh, video and talk about what the components I have. But um, I, uh, yeah, some records just don't sound that great. This one sounds awesome, so I'm glad I got that one. Uh, next stop, I guess, would have been... I got two records, I'll get the other one in a minute. Next stop would have been, of course, Cashman's. Now, put that one upside for a second. So here was what Cashman's had. They had Secret Wars number two, so following right along and getting them all in order. I got uh, Secret Wars two. Um, yeah, issue 253. So 252 was the issue from set from January, and then this, uh, for the February issue will be, uh, uh, 253, so the 254 will be, obviously, next, next month. Now, here was the, here was the X-Men one, now, <clears throat> I was kind of glad he put it in there, because I did tell him, I said, you know, we're really looking for, like, the Bronze Age, uh, you know, Bronze Age and some of the, the early modern age of Marvel, but then I also told him, I said, anything X-Men, anything Spider-Man, so luckily, put this in there because this was obviously you know the Jim Lee issue, and I, I didn't not that I remember. I, you know my views on Jim Lee, but uh, I really like that uh, that black cat right there. That looks pretty nice. But anyways, um, and that's my favorite costume she wears too, uh, for obvious reasons. And I, I like the short hair. My my son doesn't like the short hair. But anyways, uh, anyways, I picked up. Or, sorry, anyways, I got the comic, got the facsimile, and it's funny because this is the first time out of all the stuff that I've got the fact. The reason I'm getting the facsimile is because the original issues are hard to find and they're expensive. However, I did go back and look through my original issues, and sure enough, I've got the original. Um, now it's got a twenty dollar price tag on it. I don't think I paid that for it. I think I paid five bucks at a at the Great Lakes Comic Con, like four or five years ago, five, six years ago, maybe. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's funny. I, I went through and I, I and I don't want to drag them both out again, but I went through and looked at them, uh, you know, page by page, looking at the ad, the ads, everything's to spec. Everything's perfect. Um, the only thing, uh, and the nice thing is the original on the barcode covers more of her leg. You can see more of her leg in that one. Not that it's a big deal, but just notice that, um, this is, I mean, I'm a huge Jim Lee fan. I really like this issue because I liked Black Cat being in there. And I liked when Jubilee got all jealous of uh, Black Cat with Wolverine. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but uh, I always like I always like the interpersonal drama my, is my favorite. I, like all the, you know, the stuff that's going on, you know, besides the action. I mean, the action's cool, but I like all that interpersonal drama. Which is weird because I keep saying how the problem is now there's too much slice of life interpersonal drama in today's comics but it's done in such a weird i don't understand it kind of way but this is well right out of high school or this is sorry still in high school 
when this came out. So I understood more of the drama, kind of how they were kind of playing that out then. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the first time I got the one I have the original for. So I've got the original here in facsimile. I'll put the facsimile with the facsimile comics. That'll go into the facsimile box. This will go back into the regular box for my uh, original X-Men. I, I don't have a full... Well, I mean, you don't have a full run of X-Men, except for if you want to count all the essentials and stuff like that. But as far as actual comics, I've got pretty much all of the key issues... Uh, starting with, um, I've got most of, almost all the, the, my favorites, which are the, uh, the Down Under X-Men, specifically by, I mean, I've got a few of the real Leonardi issues, but I want, I really wanted the uh, Mark Silvestri ones, got most of those, and I do have a few of the Jim Lees, because, I mean, he was there, I mean, and the thing is, I didn't dislike Jim Lee at this time, I, I thought he was cool, I thought, oh, he's got a nice new style, it's a little bit different, but then everybody just went Jim Lee crazy, I just was like, ugh. You know, I mean, nobody went Mark Silvestri crazy, you know what I mean? And it's it's weird. I mean, people, I guess, went John Byrne crazy, but I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know, just Jim Lee thing just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know. It still does, but who knows what that's all about. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't hate it. I'm just not a big fan of it. Um, so, yeah, let's go, to go back here. Go down there. This one goes over there. Um, so when I went to Electric Kitsch, um, I was not expecting to find this. I, I was going through, the, I started with the the right side, which was like the psychedelic electronica, like experimental stuff. He kind of has these different sections. And I was looking for Tan Dream Dream album. Still looking for Phaedra or any of them, but you can never find them. He never has any. He has this label for it, but there's never anything in there. Um, and then I'm going down the list. I hit the yes. I'm like, ugh, hit struck on the yes. I was hoping to find some yes to finish off my yes, but struck, you know, nothing there. Although they did a union, but he wanted like 15 bucks for it, and I was like, ah, or 20 bucks for it, I was like, ah, um, I don't, Union's the album that I'm up in the air, whether or not, I, I have it, Anderson Buford Awakening and how, but I guess I'm going to get Union eventually, but Union, even though I remember when the album came out, that was the concert I went to, I don't know, for some reason it kind of rubs me the wrong way, I guess a lot of things rub me the wrong way, but anyways, I don't know, it's, it kind of, Puts me in. Whenever I hear some of the songs, I think of certain things that happened at that time, and I'm just kind of like, hmm. I don't know. Uh, if I just get, you know, obviously get past certain things, but I don't know. Some it's and again, that's beginning into the '90s, and I'm just kind of like, uh, I don't know. And I wasn't sure about the Union. I mean, the Union album pretty much is just Anderson, Buford, Wakeman, and How, Mark II, with the exception of uh, Lift Me Up. I think they all come together to play on that one, uh, but the rest of it's just the other, I mean, it's, it's just a continuation of AWADH. Um, but what I did find, I totally wasn't expecting to find this, and this was a score, was uh, Tyranny and Mutation by Blue Eyster Cult. This is their second studio album. Um, their first studio album is very hard to find on, on LP, even on Discogs, people want an arm and a leg for it. Um, it's really hard to find. This one is pretty reasonably easier to find but you know the 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 they want like forty three dollars for the reissue of this on Amazon. Um and I'm like okay. So this one's a little bit harder to find. But I found an original pressing of it. Um and you know I he really pack I didn't have to do anything. He packages this stuff up really good. I got it for nine dollars and forty three cents. So, um, and he packages the stuff. I love his bags. I gotta find out which bags he uses. I like these bags. My bags are just a little too slick and too shiny, and they kind of move around too much. I like these more matte bags, and they're heavier. So, I definitely love the way he puts this stuff together. He pretty, he doesn't write. I mean, he he didn't he didn't put a rice sleeve in this. He put this paper sleeve in it because I'm sure he doesn't want to, you know, investing in that. But you know, he puts the inner sleeve. In the back of the cover, not in the record, not in the inner sleeve. I, I love the picture on the inner sleeve, though. I love that. It's a classic first-gen Blue Oyster Cult up on stage, all the original members. And it's just funny looking at their equipment and stuff. I'm just guessing, like, who's who's got what. So I'm assuming Eric Bloom has got one, the one at Marshall Stack. Uh... I'm assume I don't you know I think 
I think that he might have the two Marshall stacks. I think this one, the shorter one, I think is Lanier's, um, it might be his keyboard amplifier. I'm sure he has more monitors near his keyboards, but he's keyboard rhythm guitar player. Um, I, maybe he has his guitar hooked up to that. I don't know on that one. Um, of course, the drum set, Al's, uh, uh, not Al, um, Joe, yeah, Al. Al's the drummer. Yeah, Al's drum set. I get the brothers, Al and Joe Bacard. I get them mixed up all the time. But um, yeah, Eric Bloom. Eric Bloom and Buck Dharma doing the old cross the cross the streams, you know, do the cross the guitar things up there. Looks like Bloom's playing a Les Paul and uh, Buck Dharma's playing a uh, an SG, which is kind of cool. I know he has these as a white SG at some point. Uh, Al's got the kit, the single kit with the four-piece kit with the single tom, which I always thought was kind of cool. Um, and then you can tell that I believe that's an Ampeg. You know, I don't know. It, it's the same speaker as the uh, as the one on the other side, but that's probably I see the bass head up there. I'm sure, pretty sure that's Joe's bass head up there. You know, I, I remember. No, it's not a Ampeg. I looked this up before. I can't remember what. It's a. It's got a name. It's I got to look it up again. It totally escapes me. Um, and then uh, Buck Dharma's got his stack over here on that side. I th he probably has another stack out. I I'm assuming how... When I like how the things are symmetrical like this. I like you got a drum set. You got those two shorter stacks. They're probably six, uh, ten inch. Six, ten inches. And then they've got... I think, like I said, well, I think one's Alan's keyboards. The other one's Joe's drum or bass. And then you've got two... Marshall stacks for uh, for Eric Bloom and then two Marsh two stack. I don't think they're all Marshalls. I think Buck Darm is using other. St I know he's not using a Marshall head. It's a different head uh, over there. It almost looked like Line Six on the end, but it's not. It can't be because I don't think Line Six was around back in 1973, was it? Um, but uh, I like that. That's cool. I like. I love how the photographer. I love that. It's so cool how they took. You know, they have the lines of the thing, and they've got the perspective right level. The camera's right level with the line for that stage line. I think that's really cool. Um, I, I, just, I like, you know, being an artist and doing comic books, I always like to look at camera angles and, and see how they do things, but that's pretty cool. I love it. I, that'd be a great poster. You know, or, or some, some type of wall thing. I mean, I guess you put this up on the wall, but... Um, played it through... Uh, the second side has a couple of pops, very small pops, during a couple of songs. I think one's during, uh, let's see, uh, Wings Wetted Down. I think Wings Wetted Down. Wings Wetted Down. I think it has a, uh, um, has a couple of pops in there. Da -da 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 or maybe it's the, or is it Baby Ice Dog? The Red Baby Ice Dog. One of those two. It's got a, two pops. That's it. The first side, which has all the good stuff on it. Hot Rails to Hell, uh, The Red and the Black, OD on Life, um, The Seven Screaming Dizbusters, all the good ones on the front. Uh, the A side's definitely better than the B side. It's time to play B sides. Um, but uh, that one's, uh, that one's plays flawlessly, so... Again, that was a find. I wasn't expecting to find that. And that one made me happy, getting that. I only need, as far as Blue Oyster Cult albums that I want, I only need, I need the first one, which is going to be the hard one to find. Also, Spectres. Spectres is a hard one to find, too. Uh, I need Spectres, which is a great album. It's the one with Godzilla on it. Um, and uh, I'm up in the air on Mirrors. I'll probably, if I see Mirrors and it's relatively cheap, I'll buy it just to complete the collection. But I, Mirrors, I'm just not a big fan of that album. It's okay. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of it. Um, Revolution by Night and Club Ninja and then Imaginos. Those three later albums after the ETI Live, I may go for those. I'm not 100% sure on that one either. Um, but... Uh, but really, I'm, I just need two albums to complete from what I really want, and I'll have all the Blue Easter Cult albums. So. Uh, last thing I found, which was kind of odd, <clears throat> was um, these. Now, if my one friend's watching, uh, my, my roofer friend, uh, he'll, he'll recognize these pretty right off the bat. Um, I saw these. I don't normally buy VHS videotapes, right? But they were... They were $3 a piece, so I couldn't really pass it up. 
Um, and uh, I'll probably never play them because I don't have a VCR. Uh, but I, would, I just wanted them just to have them because these two videos, and of course 90125 was the third one that I had. These, I had these videos, uh, I got this one uh, right outside of high school, I think, I can't remember. I got these at the, uh, well, I'll, I, you'll go listen to my yes um, <coughs> video and I'll tell you about this one. But I had these two videos. And uh, like I said, I wore this one out. This one would not play anymore. I literally wore it, played it to death. Um, you can get you can get both. Actually, this one you can you can rent this on YouTube. But if you if you just want to really listen to the, the big songs on it, you can play them piecemeal on YouTube. I'm sure you can find this somewhere else besides YouTube. And it may even be on YouTube in its entirety for free. I just haven't dug too deep. But um, and you're gonna get a better recording than this anyways because uh, you know the VHS copy is pretty bad um, but uh, yeah that that's a great concert that's their basically that's their first tour once they hit it big with um, you know their first three albums with Steve Howe uh, you know the Yes album Close to the Edge Fragile or Fragile and Close to the Edge and then boom they hit they, they go on tour with Yes songs and there's a record to that too called Yes Songs Live um, I'll probably get that if I can find that at some time but that's the concert. And this one, I think this is Royal Albert Hall, I'm pretty sure. So it just says Concert Hall, but I'm pretty sure this is recorded at Royal Albert Hall. Um, and then here's uh, the Yes Years retro Retrospective. I, it's called Yes Years. I always never call it Years. I always call it the Retrospective. And then the accompanying Yes Years CD box set, which I had at that time. I also refer to that as just the Yes box set. I never refer to it as Yes Years. So whenever somebody says Yes Years, I go, oh, you mean this? Oh, wait. Oh, no, that's Yes Songs. Okay. Um, but uh, so basically Union came out, <clears throat> and they got everybody. They did the stage in the round, and they got everybody. Raven, Howe, you know, both keyboard, Banks, Wakeman, Bruford, Alan White, and, of course, Chris and John are always there. Um, and then they go on tour with the Union. I was at that tour. This is also why kind of special to me. So I bought the box set that um, on CD. At the C I saw that at the place in Grand Rapids. I should have bought it. I swear I should have. If they want 20 bucks for it, I don't know why I didn't buy it. If I see it again, I'm going to buy it. But anyways, uh, they went on tour. I saw the tour and then um, this, uh, this, this came out and it was uh, basically you know, it's a retrospective of the band, but they have a lot of, you know, footage of them preparing for that tour, and a lot of footage from that tour. So uh, you can you can catch that whole tour, that whole it's a 1991 tour on uh, on YouTube. I've seen it, where they do the I you know I didn't even find the all Palace of Auburn Hills show that I was at, but um, yeah, that uh, that was. Uh, Definitely just a weird thing to see these two. I mean, if they had 902 and 25, I'd add all three of them. And I could, so I could get it for like 10 bucks on eBay. But again, I mean, you could watch that at 90125 on, uh, on YouTube too. And I've seen it so many times. That was a tape I, I don't think I wore it out, but it pretty, came pretty close to it. I did wear out my show, show of hands for Rush. Um, but uh, yeah. So I don't know. They'll go on the shelf and just. Uh, they just look like I look like they came right out of my mom's trailer back from 1991. <laughs> but uh, so that was my big haul for the weekend. Um, you know, I try to get out every couple of weeks and get to and do my rounds and try to find stuff. Um, I find I'm gonna I'm, like I said I'm right now I'm kind of pulling it back on buying things. I mean. I didn't really break the bank on this stuff. I think I may have spent forty dollars total over there, forty-five dollars. But um, I said I'm, I'm kind of put hit the brakes on buying things online, and uh, you know, and I'm just kind of limiting myself, trying to limit, trying to limit myself to just buying things in doing hauls where it's just fun to go out and find things, you know, like that. Um, you know, I like to go to other places. So I, I like to go out to stores. I like to go out. Remember, I keep saying in my other video, there's, you know, it doesn't seem like there's anywhere to go. 
Um, there are a few places to go. So we kind of hit the hit all those places. It's just everything's just so different now. I guess because I'm old, and I just don't have the same. It's just not the same experience. But I don't know. Uh, some stuff still. Some stuff still kind of the same. But um, but when you find stuff like that, it's like whoa. I mean that really hits you right in the uh, the nostalgia bear, the member berries. Member. <laughs> um, so let's just real quick since I got some time here. I know this is gonna be a shorter video, but let's just pull. Up, I'm gonna pull up my. Uh, Yes, uh, my yes, my uh, record collection. I'll show you. So this is what my current record collection looks like. I just basically just put the put the um, what do you call it? Uh, all the albums into my library on YouTube Music. So this I, I try not to put anything in here that I don't actually have a vinyl copy of, which I believe everything here is just the vinyl stuff. Um. Let's see, yeah, four, there's, you know, got the S albums, Bloister Cole, all these here. So this is my current record collection, and then my new additions. Um, did I meant? I think I mentioned my Relayer album, didn't I? I think I brought that up. Yeah, I think I did. I, yeah, I showed Relayer on, the, on my other video. Um, so I, I did get Relayer, too. That finally did come, which I didn't think I was going to get, because they said they canceled it. Um, but yeah, right there, I got, uh, there's Quiet Ride. It's funny, right above Pyromania. Um, so there's the Metal Health album right there, I added, and then there's Relayer, and then of course, um, uh, Tyranny and Mutation, it's hard to miss, oh there it is right there, Tyranny and Mutation, so, um, like I said, I'm almost there on the Blue Easter Cult, almost there, and yes, Rush is going to be an issue, because I'm noticing, and they had... They had, they'd used, uh, people have already traded in there and traded in their, um, their reissues. They have a bunch of used reissues in there and they, he's selling them for like the same price that you can buy them for on Amazon. So I would just rather just buy, and I tried to buy moving pictures and of course they, they never sent it to me. Um, I, I got my money back, but I mean, they never sent it to me, which is kind of weird. Um, the Rush albums are going to be tricky and there's a lot of them to buy. And I only have three right now, so getting them is going to be problematic. And that's probably going to be the end of my, towards the end. I mean, as soon as I see one, and it's at a reasonable price, like I said, when I found Grace Under Pressure and found Signals, I got them for less than 10 bucks. They play fine. They're in great condition. Boom. Uh, exit stage left. Got it. Um, so when I see them, I will buy them. But, uh, but you know, I haven't, uh, it's hard to find those. <laughs> I showed you that first police album, which I don't have to have, but I want the first police album to complete the five police studio albums. Um, Kiss, I'm pretty much set on. Don't really need any Kiss, more Kiss albums. Uh, Cheap Trick, couple, couple of those couple of 80s albums I could pick up. Um, wouldn't even mind getting... Um, uh, what's, this, what's the second album called? I can't remember what I had. The one with I Want You to Want Me on it. Not Heaven Tonight, because that's he Heaven Tonight. Uh, in Color? Yeah, In Color. Um, or they're on the motorcycles. Other than that, I'm pretty... I, I don't have any Tangerine Dream. That's another one to be problematic to find. Got all the Maiden albums I want. You know, still waiting. I, I still have to... You know, I'm... Ghosts, Ghosts. But I mean, it's talking about the original albums. Um... I mean, I've got all the ghosts except we're missing the live album, one of the EPs, big deal. But I'll definitely buy the new album when it comes out. Hopefully it comes out this year. Uh, but other than that, I think I've got, you know, like I said, I was, I was telling, you know, my son's grandpa. I said, I think I'm up to, I think right now this puts me at 75 records on the nose. I thought I had more, I thought I had 77, but now I have 75 records on the nose. And I gotta say, you're really hard pressed. I can't even think of another 50 at records, but let's just say another 75 records, make my record collection 150 records. I, I, it's going to be hard finding albums that I truly like to have. Like I said, I, my record collections are this. Records I used to have, or records that I wanted then but never got. Um, so, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe a couple of them here and there that I find just kind of oddballs, but 
to find 70 this many records again oh, I can't this is going to be hard to find them I, don't, I just don't like that much I mean I love music but I don't like that much music again which boggles my mind how these people like we've got 12,000 records it's like are you just buying everything you see it's like you can't possibly like everything oh I look all music really you do uh, yeah, I want to collect every album. It's like, well, that's that. That's you know, <laughs> I don't know. It just seems weird. Um, like I don't really care to buy any Madonna albums. Uh, I wouldn't mind having Thriller. I wouldn't mind having like Purple Rain. But there's a lot of like pop songs, pop albums from the '80s. I don't really need the Bananarama album. You know, um, there's lots of stuff. I'm. I, I, it's like, I, in order to get 75 more records, I have to start dipping into things that I probably wouldn't have got, like all the Ozzy albums, you know, all the Judas Priest albums, you know. There's a, I still need Hysteria from Def Leppard, but I'd have to get the the, the other two uh, Def Leppard albums, the, you know, the early ones, High and Dry, and the first one, I can't remember what it's called. Again, Hawkwind, hard band to find records for, but again, it's like, I can't think of 75 more records. Uh, like I said, if I had 150 records in my collection, that was that's pretty much every album that I possibly could have want. Uh, you know, because after that, I would be doing the same thing. I'd just be buying anything that I see. Like, oh, hey, look, uh, the NXS album. I don't want it, but it's there. It's cheap. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I may, or maybe I'll. Do, I and mean, there's a few that I didn't have that I didn't know I wanted. Like, I wouldn't mind getting some the Cream, a couple of Cream albums. You know, um, the Blue Cheer album. Again, these are albums that are hard to find. Uh, I'm not a huge Zeppelin fan, so I'm not really going to go nuts on the Zeppelin stuff. So could have got Ze Led Zeppelin 4 for 15 bucks, but I passed on it. Um, yeah, uh, Pink Floyd? I mean, that would probably be in the 75 albums. I'd probably definitely Dark Side of the Moon, The Wall, Wish You Were Here. And then maybe Saucer Full of Secrets and Metal. Uh, or is it Echoes? Or Echoes is on metal. I can't remember which one it is. Um, everybody loves animals. It's okay to me. I'm not, uh, final cut. Uh, um, momentary lapse of reasoning. Eh, maybe. Uh, maybe the Roger Waters album. I don't know. Uh, I should have got. I, I missed getting. I should have got the Steve Howe album. I never got the Steve Howe album. Australia! I never got that one. Uh, I could have got it. Forgot to get that one. That was one I. I did have that on CD. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think I'm getting towards the end of the rope on the records. Uh, again, which is good for my, you know, wallet's sake, but it comes down to all the other collectibles, too. There's just very few things. Once, you know, blue moon, something pops up, then I'm like, oh, I want that. But, you know, definitely not going hog wild anymore on that stuff, either. Comics, I mean, I'm just going to stick into the facsimiles. There's three come out a month. Pretty, pretty inexpensive buys. Um, not gonna really buy any old comics on newsprint not at this point. Not if they're coming out with that many of those. Uh, you know, I'd like to see them do more. I'd like to see them do all like all of Fall of the Mutants, all of Inferno. That'd be great. Um, they did Gang Wars. Would be great. If they did uh, the Craven Last Hunt. That'd be great. Uh, a lot of those are ones that I did have on you know original copies, but I ended up selling them on eBay. My big purge. So. I guess that's it on this one. This one's my haul video from the weekend. It's Monday. I'm recording this. And I'll probably post this tomorrow morning on Tuesday. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going to be the next one, but I will probably think of something. So for now, like I said, like and subscribe. Help me keep this going. I'm almost to 300. It's only taken me almost a year to get to 300 subscribers. I don't know how people get to... To 10,000 subscribers in, in six months, but apparently they do. They're a lot better looking, more charismatic, and probably have more crap that people want to hear than I do. Um, and again, I mean, I, some people give me some suggestions and stuff on how to, to you know, try to grab people. I, you know, this is, like I said, this is my cathartic fun. I don't really care if it goes anywhere. I'd like it to. I'd like it to be a revenue stream. It's not at the moment. But I would like it to be. Um, but this is just my... I just want to, you know... More recording this for my own purposes, really. To kind of just record everything before, you know, this thing starts to go haywire. And I forget, start forgetting the stuff. 
so I have like doc, you know, a video documentation of everything. So, you know, it's just kind of it'd be kind of neat to go back and watch. Like, oh, look at back in 2023, 2024, when it's 2043, 2044. Um, but uh, yeah, so. It is what it is, and I will catch you in the next one. Remember, like and subscribe to all that fancy business, and, uh, and yeah, I'll see what's on the next one when it comes up. All right, bye-bye.